Hello everyone, this is Byron King with Investor Intel coming to you from Toronto from the Prospectors and Developers Association of Canada, the PDAC conference, the world's largest mining conference. A pleasure today to speak with Mark Chalmers of Energy Fuels, uh, a wonderful company working in the uranium space but also in the rare earth space market. It's a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, for those of you, for those out there who perhaps don't know what Energy Fuels is or does, where are you located, what do you do? Hey Brian, first of all, it's a ple my pleasure to be here talking to you. Uh, Energy Fuels is a unique company like no, like no other. Um, we have a long history of producing uranium and vanadium, and a few years ago, about three years ago, we decided to embark on um, looking at advancing a rare earth strategy. And so really what you get with Energy Fuels is you get a company that uh, is uh, like decarbonization and electrification on steroids. Well, uranium is, if you'll excuse the expression, hot uh, lately. Uh, you have uh, one of the very few licensed processing facilities in the United States. Why don't you tell everybody about that? Yeah, look, we have the uh, White Mesa Mill in Blanding, Utah, or near Blanding, Utah. It's the only operable uh, uranium processing facility in the United States. And so it's a uh, a very uh, unique facility and it's our flagship for the company. Mm -hmm. And now when you say you have a mill, what goes in and what comes out of that mill? Well, historically, uh, it would treat uranium ores, uranium and vanadium ores, and so it would produce uh, both uh, yellow cake uh, and uh, V205, vanadium. Uh, but lately, uh, it also uh, is producing a rare earth carbonate uh, where we are processing monazite that we secure from Kimors in Florida and Georgia. Now, monazite, monazite mineral, tends to have a, a radioactive component in it, low levels of uranium and thorium, and so here's where the license to process uranium at White Mesa matches the geology of this monazite. Is that, is that a fair statement? Absolutely, and that is our unique advantage. And it is not just a unique advantage, it is a huge advantage. Mm -hmm. So you, so you bring in monazite uh, sand, monazite minerals, you process it there, and what comes out the other end and where does, where does that go? Okay, well we're, we're currently making a rare earth carbonate that is about 35 percent NDPR. Uh, we're removing the uranium, the thorium, uh, and uh, cerium and the lanthanum, and we're shipping it to our, our good friends at NEO Performance Materials in Estonia for further separations. Uh, in addition to that, we're also advancing uh, building our own separation plan at the White Mesa Mill, which should be operable within the next year. So you're actually pouring concrete and bolting things into the floor now? The, the beauty is we don't have to pour concrete because we're putting a solvent extraction circuit in our solvent extraction building with where, and where we have solvent extraction for uranium and vanadium uh, recovery as well. Okay, so you're going to be a, just a one end to the other uh, soup to nuts uh, facility that will do not just uranium yellow cake plus the vanadium, but rare earths as well. Correct. So think how good is that, right? How good is that? Now, you mentioned NDPR for anybody who didn't catch it, that neodymium, praseodymium. Those are the magnet metals, right? Correct. And now you also have just uh, uh, acquired a, a large uh, operation going on in, in Brazil. Tell us about that. Yeah, back in May we announced that we had secured a large land position in Brazil. It's about 60 square miles. And uh, we knew that to advance our rare earth strategy, we needed to show uh, the investors and potential off takers in time that we had pounds in the ground, as we call it, uh, of um, these rare earth monazite molecules uh, that can feed the mill in due course. So it's a large position. Uh, it's near surface, we're, we're, we're still uh, uh, doing sonic drilling on that site. Uh, we've purchased a sonic drill rig, it should be in Brazil in the next few months. Uh, and so we, we, we're, we're at the early stages there, but we're, we're going to advance it very rapidly. And what, what's going to happen in Brazil? Are you going to be processing and concentrating and then exporting, or do you have other plans downstream? Our, our plans are to make a heavy mineral sand concentrate. Uh, which will not be class 7. So it can be shipped as a non-radioactive product. Um, our plans are to ship it to North America where one of the heavy mineral sand producers can then take that, uh, recover the uh, heavy, uh, the titanium elements mainly, and the monazite. So uh, it is, uh, the monazite is still a byproduct of that process, 
uh, but it is a very good source uh, for not only us, but for these heavy mineral sand companies interested in that project. Now, the investors out there probably have seen, if they're, if they're in this space, they have seen lots of small, smaller companies that say, we're in the mineral space, the rare earth mineral space, what have you. And that's nice that they're in the mineral space, but what are they going to do with it? Is what they're going to do with it perhaps sell it to you or, or some, give it to you for processing? Or well, how does that work in the cycle of... Uh, we're open to anything that makes sense. Um, we are doers. Um, I think people realize that we are advancing quicker than anybody else that I think of in the entire world and outside of China, uh, which I think is getting people's attention. And, uh, and, and we know that with the, the China Monazite plan, uh, they have a number of um, arrangements with, with other producers, and we'll have to do the same. But the difference is we're providing the ability to, to process these these products into separated oxides uh, and eventually separated um, heavy rare earths um, in the next year for the lights and, and heavies in, in a few years after that. So. Okay, now uh, let's get back to old-fashioned uranium. Uh, the the uh, United States produces almost none of the uranium that we use in our reactors. It's, it, we, we import pretty much everything. What What is your role in uh, you know, re-domesticating uh, uranium production to the country? Well, we've been the largest producer of uranium for the past five or six years. Uh, I've been producing uranium all over the world for coming up on over 40 years. And um, yeah, the, 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 the awakening is that the United States and a lot of countries have become so overly dependent on Russia and China for a lot of these critical elements. So uh, it is emerging. We signed uh, three new long-term contracts uh, back in May uh, with two nuclear utilities in the United States. We're looking for more contracts, but people have realized that they cannot be dependent on Russia for nuclear fuel products, and, and so that is a real awakening for a lot of people around the world. And then also in, in my uh, uh, review of your company, it, it, it appears that you have a, a stockpile or an inventory of uranium material, yellow cake, uh, in, in, uh, either under your control or in warehouses, is that correct? Yeah, no, we have a large um, inventory of, of, of uranium, most of which we produce. We have purchased some uranium in the last uh, few months. Uh, we sold some uranium to the Department of Energy, uh, which was concluded, I think, a few weeks ago. Uh, and that was the first time the U.S. government had procured uranium in probably 50 years. In the olden days, it was the Atomic Energy Commission, and they, they, they had a, a call on domestic uranium production at a very handsome price, which is how the original industry expanded. Is that, is that sort of well, the origins of your, yes. of, of, your, of, of, of your sector, the industry here? Yeah, well, look, look it, it, the U.S. government um, used to support nuclear power in the United States. Uh, they they kind of lost their way there, uh, but they're finding their way back for all the right reasons. So the uh, U.S. government uh, really initiated the nuclear fuel cycle in the United States by purchasing uranium back in the 50s and the 60s, and then they ceased to do that. And over a period of number of years, uh, the infrastructure and the ability to convert and enrich basically went away. And now they're trying to reestablish that as quickly as they can. So, in a sense, energy energy fuels is the last of the of, of that original process, and you're but you have to take it forward. Is this? Oh well, yeah, exactly. So I, I think this is again this new awakening, this focus on reducing carbon emissions, uh, and also reducing dependency on these countries that are going to use, um, you know, the, the these geopolitical forces against. Uh, the, you know, particularly the United States and our allies, um, was, it's just a position we don't want to be in. Well, why don't you tell the viewers uh, how they can uh, buy your shares and what, where, where, are you, where are you listed? And well, we're listed on uh, the New York Exchange under UUUU, so four U's, and we're also listed in Toronto uh, as EFR, um, and um, we, we have a market cap of about one billion U.S. dollars. We have in the order of a couple hundred million dollars of cash or investments and we're zero debt and we are we are really burning rubber and we are going to get there and be a world significant producer uh, in the next few years I believe we still got a lot of work to do a uh, very exciting space and it's never seen anything more exciting in my entire career 
uh, in the mining business. Thank you so much. We wish you well. Uh, viewers out there, thank you for your attention. Uh, energy fuels, you, 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 you. Uh, Mark Chalmers, uranium, rare earths. Uh, this is a go-to company. Look at the website, look at the presentation, and uh, think hard about this one. Thank you. Thank you, Byron.